In 1935, Carl Mace, German physician, developed the first two-wavelength ear O2 saturation meter with red and green filters, later switched to red and infrared filters. His meter was the first device to measure O2 saturation. Pulse oximetry is a non-invasive method for monitoring a patient's O2 saturation in its most common transmissive application mode. A sensor is placed on a thin part of the patient's body, usually a fingertip or earlobe, or in the case of an infant, across a foot. Light of two wavelengths is passed through the patient to a photodetector. The changing absorbance at each of the wavelengths is measured along determination of the absorbance due to the pulsing arterial blood alone, excluding venous blood, skin, bone, muscle, fat, and in most cases, nail polish. A plethmograph is an instrument for measuring changes in volume within an organ or whole body usually resulting from fluctuations in the amount of blood or air it contains. A photoplethmograph is a plethmograph that uses optical techniques. A pulse oximeter measures oxygen saturation levels and is also a PPG. It can measure the change in the volume of arterial blood with each pulse beat. This change in blood volume can detect in peripheral parts of the body such as the fingertips or earlobes using this technique. So the design concept of a finger plethmograph is that we take the light from the red LED shine it through the finger and the photoresistor will be will, will pick up what is not absorbed by the hemoglobin in, on the other side the the absorption of of red light by hemoglobin as you can see by this figure is that both oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin are able to absorb the red light around the 6 616 nanometer wavelengths now the the what creates the pulse is the change in blood volume from cardiac from cardiac pulse each of our heartbeats goes through a systolic and a diastolic phase uh, to as it pumps blood that change in blood volume is reflected even in our fingers and each heartbeat creates a wa creates a wave generated by the finger ppg here in this you can see the the, the rise in the systolic phase and the descent during the diastolic phase of a uh, of a heartbeat. Our circuit required several stages of gain. This was mainly because our initial signal amplitude was very small and we needed to make it identifiable once it was seen as an output. This was done in several stages since this is the better way to reduce noise. Although the diagram shows two operational amplifiers, only one unit is really necessary to achieve this. This is mainly because each unit had several inputs and outputs. The signal was also filtered in order to reduce the amount of noise and keep only the desired signal features. To do this, both a high pass filter and a low pass filter were used, which in combination act as a band pass filter. And just as with the gain, the signal is filtered twice before being sent as an output into the software. Our physical circuit was composed of many of the general components like resistors and capacitors of specific values. Yet the main four components were the light emitting diode, also known as LED, which created the necessary light source, the phototransistor which captured this light and turned it into an electrical signal, the operational amplifier which amplified the signal, and finally the potentiometer which created the necessary signal offset. Now let us look at our circuit and how it interacts with the subject to create a signal.
After adjusting the settings in the oscilloscope, we are able to see the heart pulse through our finger. Now that we have a pulse wave from the finger PPG, we can apply our device to medical diagnostics. From comparing waveforms of known healthy hearts, individuals, we can confirm the calm normal wave seen in the top figure. This is our control group. We can record the pulse from patients with known heart conditions. The, those pulses can be are used to find the average shape characteristics for specific heart conditions. Here are three three waveforms. The first one, as I mentioned, is an average healthy heart condition. The second one shows that after the first pulse, there's a per perfusion due to low blood volume output of the heart. The third one shows a an example of arrhythmia that could be caused by different heart conditions. This can be in, in overall can be applied to diagnose arrhythmia, stenosis, regurgitation, or valvular failure. Problems that we encountered with the design was noise from the ambient light of the LED that wasn't going through the finger and from surrounding the computer and the, the light of the room. We also had problems displaying the signal properly in our oscilloscope. Now the signal from the finger sensor produced was a faint signal that had uh, irregular noise. Now, we actually ran into a couple complications, a couple errors, and what seemed to be a dead end. However, we were able to put everything together. Ultimately, we built a small device with a photoresistor on one side and an LED on the other. That fit snug on the user's finger and that covered ambient light. We were able to get a reading of the user's pulse. We were also able to implement the schematic accordingly with a low pass and high pass filter that reduced noise as well as proper amps with proper gains. Finally, we were able to display the results on the oscilloscope and of course the launch pad. Suggested improvements. How could we improve this device? First off, we could build something that is more flexible. The device could be comfortable for the user as well as remain in the finger secure but allow the hand to move more freely. Secondly, we can make improvements to electrical components, a smaller LED light, a better photoresistor that is not so sensitive, and something that minimizes ambient light. Finally, more sophistication into the device. A more sophisticated device that allows for even more of a precise reading, a simple user-friendly interface, and of course, allows for future research studies.